Monster Hunter World is doing a lot to get new players into the long-running series, but it's arguably doing a lot more for those who have played before. If you're already a fan, here's 47 changes we spotted in our time with an early build of the game. One of the most fundamental changes in World, almost every armor piece now offers a different skill, meaning a lot more mixing and matching to find the right build. Gunner and Blademaster armor are no more. The series' two types of armor are now one. Now it's one set fits all so you can change weapons at will without the need to make two different sets of armor. You can now see every piece of equipment live on your avatar at the armory, as long as you've unlocked the ability to forge it, of course. Bowguns and Kinsects have new customization options. Kinsects are selected and upgraded apart from the Insect Glaive, while Bowguns get some useful mods. Weapons are now primarily crafted through upgrades. You won't be forging most of your murder tools. There are huge trees worth of upgrades to create your implement of choice. Weapons can be downgraded. If you realize you've upgraded to the wrong branch of a weapon tree, you can drop back to a previous incarnation. Wish lists. If you're farming for a special weapon, you can now set the game to alert you as soon as you have all the necessary ingredients to make it. Mantles come with a cooldown. These new items affect your skills in various ways, and they can't be used up, but they do have a cooldown between uses. The iconic grill tune is back, but it's considerably shorter, so hunters can stock up on stamina healing grilled meat more efficiently in the field. Nice! That looks so tasty! World's hunting grounds are significantly bigger, have multiple elevation levels, and will require some time to actively remember every secret there is to find. Maps aren't just bigger, there are no zone-based loading screens to deal with either, but the zones themselves still exist. No more forgetting to feast before heading out on a hunt, in Monster Hunter World there's a canteen at every camp. Considering the huge map sizes, there are multiple camps to choose from as a quest starting point. Any camp can be fast travelled to as long as you're out of combat, making for less time backtracking and more time monster slaying. You can also change equipment at camp. To increase the flexibility of play, hunters can now change weapons and armour at the camp whilst out on a hunt to switch strategies on the fly. The areas might be huge, but at least when you stumble upon a gathering point or some other point of interest, it's now automatically saved to your map. Environmental attacks. Who would have guessed it? World puts more thought into its world than the previous games. Why not try luring a Diablos from underground by making Drake scream by pelting them with rocks? Tracking monsters using footprints and drool is both harder and more satisfying than expected. You'll eventually start recognizing individual monster footprints on sight alone, which feels really cool. Tracking and hunting monsters repeatedly adds details about them like weaknesses or carve chances to your field guide. Numbers now pop out of a monster when you hit them, cluing you in on what weapon used where is most effective in real time. If you can remain mounted on a monster long enough, you can end your knife-stabbing combo by knocking down the beast with a bespoke special move. Much about the hub has been streamlined, not least the fact that you don't have to go to the village gate to leave for a quest anymore. The best way of earning armor spheres is to take on these extra objectives as you hunt, from gathering mushrooms to capturing bosses. Investigation quests. These new special activities are limited use versions of normal hunting quests, but offer extra rewards based on their difficulty. For some reason, we're not allowed to actually show you one of them, so here's me feeding a cat a sausage. No, oh, dear me! Rathian! We finally get to hear the intended pronunciation of all those made-up monster names with a generous amount of voice acting. Your hunter can look more or less exactly how you want them to in World. We're looking forward to seeing some absolute freaks. And you can turn off your helmet. The work you put into your character with the in-depth character creator won't go to waste because of a bulky helmet. You can just now set it to not show up. You can also customize the appearance of your feline pal, but palicos themselves are much simpler than we've seen in recent games. Your only real means of changing how they play is through their armor set, weapon, and a piece of equipment. Weapons feel familiar, but slightly different, with new combos and special attacks, all of which you can try in the new training ground. Some, but not all, of the crafting has been simplified. For example, potions are now made with two herbs instead of a herb and a blue mushroom. Additionally, you can set up items to be crafted as soon as you pick up the necessary ingredients. It's nice to gather herbs on a quest and have potions automatically fill your item pouch. There's also sub-crafting. Even more conveniently, if you can't craft an item because you need to craft another item to make the first item, the game takes some of the faff away. Because you can't just escape a monster by running to a different zone these days, consuming a potion won't stop you entirely in your tracks. Whetstones are the only item we've seen that require you to stand still. Speaking of whetstones, these are now available infinitely on your item bar. No more mining. And you can pick up resources on the move. To speed up the hunting process and make gathering less of a chore, picking up most resources is significantly quicker. 
There's no disconnect between single and multiplayer quests. There's only one quest line in Monster Hunter World, and every quest can be played solo or with others. You can now drop into a quest already in progress. Just be aware of how long ago it started, because after the 10 minute mark, you'll be getting fewer rewards for completing it. For the first time ever, global servers are interconnected, allowing you to play with anyone from anywhere in the world, at least on the same platform. You can also choose to join a quest posted by someone who specifically called for help in the middle of a single player hunt. Remember how Goldeneye used to finish games by giving players awards for standout bits of play? Monster Hunter World has hunter highlights that show you the best mounters, trappers and gatherers in your party. Daily login bonuses. You'll receive some useful and hard to get items just for jumping online each day. New T-Rex monster Anjanath looked pretty easy in early demos. Take it from me, that is not the case in the full version. Turf Wars. Monsters don't just interact in the wild now, they full-on battle each other. A party will almost always stop to watch the theatrics. Don't just pay attention to the big creatures, as smaller ones can benefit you too. Drakes can be used as fast travel, and the foxy squirrel things that live in the forest undergrowth will use shortcuts you might miss. Some creatures can also be used as items. Paralyzing frogs, healing wasps, and most usefully, blinding flashbugs. What actually happens to monsters when you capture instead of slay them? Well, now they pop up in a corner of the hub before presumably being vivisected to give you all those bonus materials. And last but not least, there are no poogies. The dress-up pig mascots we've grown to know, love, and occasionally knock out of trees appear to be gone entirely. Boo! If you didn't understand any of that, you probably need our entry-level preview, which breaks down the changes in Monster Hunter World for new players. On the other hand, if you just want to see more monsters fighting each other, why not check out our compilation of all the turf wars we saw?